we can output multiple object property values in a single line of text as shown in this script. Here we have a variable object named person. This object has four different properties, first name, last name, age, and eye color. Using our get element by ID output method, we can call multiple property values to form a sentence. Each value, in addition to the first one, can be added with a plus sign. The text strings in between the variable properties must be in quotes. This particular script will list the first property value, which is the first name. So for example, John has, and then the eye color property. So in this case, blue. John has blue eyes. That will be the output in our web browser. And we can test that by launching this script in our web browser. And as you can see here, it, it outputs the correct sentence. We've worked a bit with JavaScript strings already. A string simply stores a series of characters, for example, John Smith. A string can be any text inside quotes. You can use both single and double quotes. Let's take a look at an example. In this script, we have two variables, student name one and student name two. Each variable contains the full name of an individual. The first variable contains John Smith, and the second contains Roy Martin. As you can see, the first name is separated from the last name by a single space. The first variable is nested inside double quotes. The second is nested in single quotes. Both methods will work. We've outputted each string on an individual line, and we've separated each variable using the break tag. You might recall the break tag from the HTML section of this course. Let's take a look at what this script looks like in our web browser. Here we can see each variable outputted on its own line in our web browser. Now let's take a look at another example to illustrate the use of quotes inside of a string. We now have three variables, line one, line two, and line three. In line one, we use an apostrophe in the first word. This is acceptable in JavaScript. Variable line two and line three show the correct method of using quotes inside a string. You can use quotes as long as they don't match the quotes surrounding the string. So for variable line two, we've used double quotes surrounding the string and for that reason, single quotes around the name Xavier. On line three, we've used single quotes surrounding the string, and for that reason, we've had to use double quotes around the name Xavier. We'll save our file and preview it in our web browser, and we can see that everything works correctly. We can see the apostrophe in the first line, we can see our single quotes and our double quotes outputted from variable two and three. We can determine the length of a string using the built-in property length. In this example script, we have a variable called txt, which contains all 26 letters of the alphabet. To output the length of this string, we can set our inner HTML property to txt.length. 
With your file saved, preview it in your web browser, and you can see that it outputs the length of the variable, 26. As we're aware, strings must be written within quotes. Let's see what happens when we create a variable and put quotes inside of the string. In this example, we've placed quotes around the word players in our sentence. If we go ahead and preview this file in our web browser, we can see here that the text does not output as it should. To eliminate this issue, we need to use the backslash escape character. We must put one before the initial quote and one over here. Now when we save the file and refresh our web browser, we can see that the sentence correctly displays with quotations around the word players. And that is how you deal with special characters that you have issues with in JavaScript output. We can use JavaScript functions to generate a random number. This can be done using the math.random function. This function will generate a number between 0 and 1. Let's take a look at how it works using this example script. Here, we're using the getElementById output method to output a random number. And there's the math.random function. Let's go ahead and save the file and preview it in our web browser. Here, we can see a random number is generated. If we refresh the page, it'll generate different random numbers. The value is always between 0 and 1. We can use the math.min or math.max function to find the lowest or highest value in a list of arguments. This example script provides an illustration of how this works. Here, we have a list of numerical values. We can use the math.min function to locate and output the lowest value. In this case, the math.min function should output negative 150. Let's test this in our web browser to see if it works. We can see in our web browser that negative 150 is in fact outputted. But what if we wanted to see the maximum value listed in this sequence of numbers. In that case, all we have to do is update min to max, save the file, and refresh. Now we have the highest value in that list, 600. We can round decimal numbers to the nearest integer using the math.round function. In this example, we use the math.round function to round the value of 15.4 to the nearest integer. Since the value after the decimal is below 0.5, the number will be rounded to 15. We can test this in our web browser to confirm the results. This is the output in our web browser and we can see that 15.4 has been rounded to 15. Now if we update the value to 15.6, the number will be rounded to 16. To specify whether the value should be rounded up or down, we can use the math.seal or math.floor function. Let's go ahead and specify that we want 15.6 to be rounded down. So we'll change it to math.floor. After saving the file and refreshing the page, we can see that it now rounds down. If we wanted to round it up to 16, 
we can specify that by putting math.seal. And once we refresh the web browser, we can see that the value has now been rounded up to 16. JavaScript arrays are used to store multiple values in a single variable. In this example, we've created an array variable called fruits and stored six values into it. Each value contains the name of a fruit. The six values we have are apple, orange, pear, grape, tangerine, and mango. In order to output a specific value in the array, we can refer to it using an index number. The index number starts with zero. The first item in the array is identified by the index number zero, in this case, apple. If the index number was one, we would be referencing orange, and so on. Since we've used an index number of zero, when we preview this in our web browser, we'll see that the word apple is displayed. This is the first item in the array. If we change the index number to three, we'll see that the, the word displayed in our web browser changes to grape. And that's how we reference individual items in the array. In, in the situation where we wanted to display the number of items in the array, so for example, here we have six items, we can use the length property. We've used the length property before. And when we save the file, and refresh the page, we can see that the number six has been outputted because there are six items in the array. There are many ways that the values in an array can be outputted. We can output each value in the array by using the toString method. To do so, simply type in toString and an open and close bracket. I'll save the file and we'll preview this in our web browser. And we can see here that each item in the array has been outputted. You'll also notice that each value is separated by a comma. If you want to specify the separator, use the join method. In this case, we'll specify that we want an asterisk as the separator. Keep in mind that the asterisk is contained within an open and closed quotation, and we've also included an individual space before and after the asterisk. So after you've saved your file, refresh your web browser, and you'll see that the separator has now changed. We can remove the last element of an array from being outputted by using the pop method. In this case, the last element is mango. This will no longer be presented in our output. As you can see in our web browser, Mango is not outputted. In order to remove the first word instead, or the first element, we can use the shift method. Now when we save our file and refresh our web browser, you'll see that Mango reappears but Apple has been removed. 
To add a new element to the end of an array, we can use the push method. In this case, we'll add the word cherry to the very end of our output. And you can see that we now have a new element that has been outputted. To add a new element to the beginning of an array, we can use the unshift method. We can see that the element cherry has now been added to the beginning of the array. Array elements can be changed using the index number. Let's change the first element of our array to Kiwi. We'll start off with the name of the array, Fruits, and then specify the index number corresponding to the value we want to amend. And that's it. Once we save our file, we can preview it in our web browser. And we can now see that the first value, apple, has been amended to kiwi. If we were to change the index number, let's say to 3, and save our file and refresh, we can see that grape has now changed to kiwi. We can also delete elements in an array using index numbers as well. Let's delete pair from our list of elements. Since pair would have the index number 2, we can type the following. We'll save our file. And in our web browser, we can now see that there is an empty space where pair would have appeared. The splice method can be used to add multiple new items to an array. This method also allows us to specify the position of the new elements and also if any elements should be removed. Let's go through an example to better illustrate this concept. Say we wanted to add two fruits, lemon and banana after the second element in our array, which is orange. To do this, we can type the following. We start with the variable name, and then we create our splice method. The value 2 indicates that we want the new elements to start with an index number of 2. The 0 indicates that we do not want to remove any of the other elements in our array. Once we save our file and preview it in our web browser, we can see that lemon and banana have been added after orange. Lemon does have an index value of 2, so the output is correct. We can sort an array alphabetically using the sort method. This sample script includes an array variable named cars. There are four elements in the array, Volvo, Acura, Honda, and Lexus. Let's go ahead and add the sort method into the script to sort the elements alphabetically from A to Z. 
we start with the variable name cars and then enter the sort met method we'll save our file and preview it in our web browser to make sure it worked we can see here that each array element is now sorted in alphabetical order We can also reverse sort the elements in an array using the reverse method. To do so, simply type the following line of code into your script. Now when we refresh the page, you'll notice that each element item is in reverse order. We can join two arrays using the concat method. In this sample script, we have two arrays, one named girls and the other boys. The girls array has four elements, Julie, Samantha, Laura, and Jill. The boys array has five elements, Bob, Joe, Walt, Sam, and Fred. The third variable is named combined. This variable will store the element values of both arrays using the concat method. To output these values, we can use our getElementById output method. Let's go ahead and preview this file in our web browser to see what the output looks like. Here, we can see that the elements of both arrays have been outputted as we intended. When programming in any language, it's very common to create logic that performs different actions based on one or more conditions. JavaScript has a variety of conditional statements that we'll explore in this lesson. We'll be exploring the if, else, and else if statements. These statements allow us to execute an action contained within a block of code if certain conditions are met. Let's take a look at how this works with a simple example. We'll create a script that converts a student's numerical test score into a letter grade. To keep it simple, we'll assume the test was out of 100 marks. First, we need to define the grading system. Let's say that a score of 0 to 49 equals an F, 50 to 69 equals a D, 70 to 79 equals a C, 80 to 89 equals a B, and 90 to 100, 100 inclusive equals an A. In order to do this, we need to start by creating our test score variable and assigning a value. We'll call the variable score and we'll assign a, a value of 65 for now. Keep in mind that we'll make changes to the score to test our script later on. Next, we'll need to start with our first if statement. If the score is less than 50, we want to output an F. So start by typing if. score is less than 50 we will output a, an f using the document dot write method If the score is greater than 50, but less than 70, we want to output a D. Since we're adding a condition to our original if statement, we must start this condition with the else if statement.
I'll copy this else if statement because we're going to create a few others. So the next one we need is if the score is greater than 70 but less than 80, we want to output a C. This is for if the score is greater than 80 but less than 90, we'll output a B. And if the score is greater than 90 or equal to 100, we want to output an A. Now the last thing we want to do is if the score is anything above 100, we need to display an error message indicating that the score must be less than 100 because the exam was out of 100 marks. For this, we'll use the else statement. The else statement instructs the script on what to do if none of the preceding conditions have been met. And now we'll go ahead and save this file and preview it in our web browser. So here we have a D that has been outputted because our current score, we've set it to 65. Now that is greater than 50 and less than 70. So if we were to change our score, Let's go ahead and change the score to 81. And in this case, it correctly outputs a B. Because that's over 80, but less than, uh, less than 90. Now let's see what will happen if we create a score above 100. Okay, so our, our else statement is working. The score must be less than 100. And so you can go ahead and play with that. But that's basically how the if, else if, and else statements work, also known as conditional statements. Comparison operators are used to compare the equality or difference between variables or values. There are several comparison operators that can be used in JavaScript. This chart provides an overview of each one. We'll go through a few of them to demonstrate how they work. In this test script, we've created a variable and assigned it a value of 6. We'll use the getElementById method to output a true or false result when using different comparison operators to compare our variable value with another value. Let's start with our equal to operator. Let's test to see if our variable value is equal to 8. We know that this is not the case, so our script should output the word false when we test it in our web browser. So I'll save this file and just test it in the browser. And we can see that it does in fact output the word false. If we were to change the value to 6, then and refresh our web browser, the output is true because our variable value x is in fact equal to 6. We can use the not equal operator to see if our variable is not equal to 10, for example. This is the symbol for not equal. We'll update the 6 to 10. 
So we know that our variable value 6 is not equal to 10. So when we test this in our web browser, it should display true, which it does. Now if we were to change this to 6, it should display false because our variable value is in fact equal to 6. You can test out the remaining comparison operators and see what the outcome produces. The Boolean function can be used to find out if an expression or variable is true. As a general rule, everything with a real value is true. This includes both numerical and string data. Anything without a real value is false. Let's take a look at an example. In this script, we have seven variables declared, b1 to b7. Each variable uses the Boolean function to test whether a specified value is true. Using the getElementById method, we can output the data. Let's take a look at this page in our web browser to see the results. We can see in our browser that all the numbers, including 80, 2.6, negative 10, are true. The same goes for variable b6, which contained the equation. The strings included in variable b4 and b5 are also true. The last variable, variable b7, which contained the value 0, is false. 